The Nuclear Tourist by George Johnson. So in the previous video for uh, the first part of the lesson, I showed you uh, the questions, we did our circle strategy. So now we're gonna be reading the story together. Notice how there's a mask, you know, for chemicals and stuff. So we made that inference in the other video. I read the background information as well, but I'm gonna read it again just in case. Background. On April 26, 1986, during a routine test, a power surge caused an explosion in one of the reactors at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Pripyat, Ukraine. To date, the Chernobyl incident is the worst nuclear power plant disaster in history, exceeding other incidents such as the 1979 Three Mile Island disaster in Pennsylvania. The Chernobyl explosion is one of only two incidents that have been classified as level seven events on the international nuclear event scale, the highest possible rating in terms of destruction. So right here on the side, we have our one, two, three. Read the text for comprehension. Are you understanding the information they're giving us? Go back and you're going to be doing the side notes later on. That's also going to be an assignment grade. On the side, you're going to write your notes. Okay, they say that five serviettes of radiation is enough to kill you. So I was curious to see the reading on my Russian made dosimeter. As our tour van passed into the exclusion zone, the vast quarantine wilderness that surrounds Chernobyl, thick stands of pines and birches crowded the roadside as our guide reminded us of the ground rules. Don't pick up the mushrooms which concentrate radionuclides or risk letting the contaminants into your body by eating or smoking outdoors. A few minutes later, we passed the first of the abandoned villages and pulled over to admire a small band of wild Preswalski's horses. So in the bottom, remember, they will give us a definition for certain vocabulary words. So right here, this one means horses endangered, so wild horses that are native to Asia. Dosimeter is a device used to measure total absorbed doses of radiation. Okay, Remember, there was a big explosion here. 28 years after the explosion of a nuclear reactor of Chernobyl, the zone all but devoid of people has been seized and occupied by wildlife. These are bison, boars, moose, wolves, beavers, falcons in the ghost city of Pripyat. Eagles roost atop deserted Soviet area apart apartments. The horses, a rare endangered breed, were let loose here a decade after the accident when the radiation was considered tolerable, giving them more a more than a thousand square miles to roam. I glanced at my meter, 0 0.19 microsieverts per hour, a fraction of a millionth of a single sievert, a measure of radiation exposure. Nothing to worry about yet. The highest levels I had seen so far on my trip to Ukraine were on the transatlantic flight from Chicago spikes of 3.5 microsieverts per hour as we flew 40,000 feet over Greenland, cosmic rays penetrating the plane and passengers. Scientists studying Chernobyl remain divided over the long-term effects of the radiation on the flora and fauna. Flora and fauna, the uh, um, flowers and the animals in there, uh, so far, they have been surprisingly subtle. More threatening to the animals are the poachers who sneak into the zone with guns. A few minutes later, we reached Sousy, an old farming village, and wandered among empty houses, broken windows, peeling paint, crumbling plaster. On the floor of one, of one home, a discarded picture of Lenin. Pointy, head, pointy beard, jutting chin, stared sternly at nothing. 
and hanging by a cord on the bedroom wall was a child's doll. It had been suspended by the neck as if it was with an executioner's noose. Outside, another doll sat next to the remains of a broken stroller. These were the first of the macabre, think of this word, macabre, tributes we saw during our two days in the zone. Dolls sprawling, half-dressed in cribs, gas masks hanging from trees, tables placed by visitors here legally or otherwise, signifying a lost, quiet horror. Further down the road, we were surprised by an inhabitant dressed in a scarf, a red sweater, and a winter vest. Rosalia is one of what officials call the returnees, stubborn old people, women mostly, who insist on living out their lives in the place they call home. She seemed happy for the company. Prompted by our guide, she told us of the worst hardships. The lands around Chernobyl, or Chernobyl, as it is known in the Ukraine, are part of the Pripyat marshes on the Eastern Front, where the bloodiest battles of World War II were fought. She remembers the German soldiers and the hardships under Stalin. You can't see radiation, she said in Ukrainian. Anyway, she added, she's not planning to have children. She lives with five cats. Before we departed, she showed us her vegetable garden and said her biggest problem now is Colorado potato bugs. So right here for your site notes, you're going to answer this in paragraph 5 and 6. Identify challenges that Rosalia faced. How does the final problem mentioned in paragraph 6 right here contrast with Rosalia's other problems? Conclude. What does this contrast suggest about Rosalia's personality? Here in the bottom, they give us uh, two definitions. They're historical leaders or historical people. Lenin, the leader of the Russian Communist Revolution of 1917 in the Soviet Union, and Stalin, Joseph Stalin, was the leader of the Soviet Union from 1922 to 1953. Under his rule, it became a world power but millions of people were imprisoned in labor camps, died, and were executed. There is something deeply rooted in the human soul that draws us to the sites of unmanageable disaster, Pompeii, Antium, Auschwitz, and Treblinica. Remember, Auschwitz was a concentration camp during the Holocaust uh, uh, situation. All eerily quiet now, but in the 21st century, we hold a special awe for the aftermath of nuclear destruction. The splitting of the atom almost 100 years ago promised to be the most important human advance since the discovery of fire, unleashing the forces bound inside atomic nu nuclei, would bring the world nearly limitless energy. Inevitably, it was the first used in warfare, but after Hiroshima, the Japanese and, uh, attack, and Nagasaki, a grand effort began to provide electricity too cheap to meter, freeing the world from its dependence on fossil fuels. More than half a century later, the swirling symbol of the atom, once the emblem of progress and the triumph of technology, has become a bewitching death's head associated in people's minds with destruction and cold war fear every spring visitors head for stallion gate in southern new mexico for an open house at trinity site where the first atomic bomb was detonated a preview of what was to come when the bombers reached japan monthly tourists to the nevada test site in the Madra desert where more than a thousand nuclear weapons were exploded during the Cold War, are booked solid through 2014. Then there is the specter of nuclear meltdown in 2011, Chernobyl, site of the world's worst, worst catastrophe and at a nuclear plant, was officially declared a tourist attraction. So right here I'm going to stop and then you're going to continue reading the next paragraphs all the way down 
and then you'll be answering the questions on your own. Okay, so the questions right here are due today. So I read um, more than half of the story with you guys. You will continue to uh, read the next.